At the request of user Seb Sheen Steel, this is a review of Rocket League for the Xbox One. This is far from a forgotten game, but this was the only request I received from the last video, and since I'm happy to do really any game, as long as it has an achievable length and doesn't go on forever, I'm happy to take requests. Don't be shy, and if you have any requests, go ahead and make a suggestion. Although preferably, it would be recommended if you request a forgotten game, whether it be an underrated gem, or a tie-in game no one remembers, or an old game that's been lost in time, or anything of the sort. Those are the requests I'm most likely to do. I'll probably play them on emulation. If it's on NES, Super NES, Genesis, PlayStation 1 or 2, or anything on the Nintendo portable consoles up to the Nintendo DS. Okay, let's have a look at today's game, Rocket League. Rocket League is a vehicular soccer game released in 2015 for Microsoft Windows and PlayStation 4, with Xbox and Nintendo Switch ports being added later in the game's life. The game is highly competitive, as are a lot of sports games. But what sets Rocket League apart from the junk that is the EA and 2K sports games is that there's actually a game design twist to the whole thing. Most people accept that the whole point of playing a game most of the time is to feel empowered or do something you wouldn't be able to usually do. FIFA and NBA 2K are just interactive versions of stuff that you could watch on TV. And there's no spin to it to make it more like, you know, a video game. Rocket League is the perfect concept for a sports game. It has something about it that makes it a video game that escapes you from the real world. And that is cars instead of soccer players. Lionel Messi can go screw himself. Because in this game, cars are the dominant and only way to play this game. My first ever experience of sorts with the game was watching my younger brother play it. And looking back, I wondered why he played FIFA alongside that when Rocket League is closer to video game material. Since the game is free nowadays, I decided to have a look at it. Because why not? Since I'm no Fortnite kid or soccer boy, I'm not the sort of guy who embraces the insanely popular games. In fact, I found Fortnite to be the easiest online game ever when I popped into a four-man team server on my own. So I consider myself to be someone who can go into a game like this and be as objective as possible. This is quite a simple game. Like most multiplayer games, there is a casual and competitive match playlist. What I noticed is that at this point, you have plenty of customization options. And I decided to go with the Warhog from Halo. There's actually a lot of brand cosmetics that they got the license for. Gears of War, Halo, Fast and Furious, Rick and Morty, Super Mario, and Twisted Metal. There's a lot of licensed brand in this game, sort of like Fortnite. And an interesting connection on top of that is that Epic Games acquired Rocket League developer Cyanix two years ago. Going into my first match, the controls took some time to get used to. Now, driving controls are different across many games. I was expecting a Grand Theft Auto 5 control scheme with a jump and boost button added in. For reference, the game with the hardest control scheme to learn for me was Assassin's Creed Origins since it was so different from the other games. That game took me a week of playtime, but this game is easy to learn after two matches. Just don't go into it expecting it to be like a certain game you're thinking of. Since this is soccer with cars, you need to push the ball into the opposite goal. Like regular soccer, there's two teams, blue and orange. You'll be randomly put into a team. Of course, since you're driving a car instead of controlling Ronaldo, the way of scoring a goal is pushing the ball towards the goal. You never have full control of the ball, since you're only able to push the ball in a certain direction, and the other player is doing the same. You'll have a tough time getting the ball into the goal. Most of the time it bounces off and it nearly gets through the goal which gives me the feeling that that was intentional to make players in a party chat say things like, ugh, I nearly scored. Another thing that this game does is allow you to jump and boost, as mentioned before. These mechanics are absolutely necessary because without them, it would be harder to get a goal. Jumping can assist in making targeted pushes, and the boost mechanic can help get to the ball before your opponent can. Also, if you ram into an opponent with boost, it causes the opponent to blow up and get them out of the game for a short moment before respawning. The map design is worthless. Every map is the same with the outside being the only thing that's different. 
don't worry about it. There's also custom matches that I tried and it has a lot of customization, almost as much as Halo custom games. You can change the size of the ball, the gravity, the boost, pretty much everything. I also tested out the game with another player and we both had a fine time. It was sort of the thing where you could casually talk while playing the game and there are call signs you can pull in case you don't have a gaming microphone. There isn't much else to say about the game because that's the gameplay loop. Play soccer, drive cars, push the ball, score. And it has all the traditional soccer rules except after every goal, the ball always goes towards the middle each time. Connection and network was no problem, it hardly lagged, and it only renders in models before the match actually starts. And the wait for a match is short, thank god. Graphically, the game is no shining beacon of reality, but its design fits the game quite well. I think the game makes it challenging enough to get the goal in, without making it overly difficult. If you don't factor in whoever you are playing against and their skill, playing this game, I got the casual fan type of feeling. This is one of those games that relies on enjoyability for replay value. Games like this have to do it so they don't lose players. The game is pretty much the same thing every time with slight variations, just like real soccer. A well-crafted RPG can engage me a thousand times more, but for what it's worth, this is quite a replayable game. It being an original low price and now being a free-to-play game certainly helped. This was a fairly priced game back when it cost something to play. I have to admit that this game isn't exactly for me, since I'm not one for sports, but any soccer fan should definitely play this over all the other sports games, especially FIFA. You know you'd rather give Epic Games money than EA. They're both crap, but you'd rather give one of them money. I give this game an 8 out of 10, but let me make something clear. This is for the type of game it was designed to be, not the objective quality of the whole experience and how much content it has, because this game has little content, but it's the enjoyability that drives this game. It's great to play if you're flat out broke and can't afford anything, but I wouldn't say spending your money on microtransactions is a good idea. This game is playable on all the mainstream systems. You can play it on Xbox, PlayStation, Switch, or Windows PC. Maybe I'm not the best person to review a game like this, but a good game can engage you into things you're not usually into, which was certainly the case here. I'm JJ Plagiarisms, and until next time, what are stories but mystery boxes?